Welcome to the Y Factor on 87.6. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the Y Factor Today on Thursday the 8th of March 2012 That's right, uh, today's Thursday and uh, another awesome Thursday Beautiful weather outside, right? Nice and rainy And today's show is brought to you by the best steakhouse in Sydney Flame Steakhouse Pizza and Ribs in Campsie Beamy Street Don't forget to go there tonight because tonight they have their special $10 pizzas, $10 pastas That's right, and 20% food. off everything else Wonderful food, great best prices, in the area. great environment Go Order. down there, give it a shot. So, Jamel, today we have a pretty big episode, don't That's we? That's right, we're going to start off with the news, and then we're going to start off, we've got an interview coming up with Doha Daher from Pharmacy for Less in That's Lakemba, right. yeah. talking about halal pharmaceuticals. Something very new, and then we got our, our resident NRL analyst, Nadel Krayem, come in and talk to us about predictions for the NRL season and some big hitting issues. Some, it's a pretty funny uh, interview right there, yep. and then stay tuned also for Rash Rani's rant, Hating big, on the World. Big news um, in the social media network. In concerning a certain Coney. Yes, Mr. Coney, Mr. 2012. Coney. But uh, we'll get straight into it with uh, the news from Jamal. Alrighty, top news for this week, Coney 2012. A documentary film about the little-known conflict that has devastated Uganda since the early 1980s has become a surprise viral hit, being viewed nearly 4 million times in two days. Coney 2012, named after the infamous leader of Christian terrorist group the Lord's Resistance Army, LRA, is a film and campaign by humanitarian group Invisible Children that aims to make Joseph Coney famous, not to celebrate him, but to raise support for his arrest and a president for international justice. The documentary describes the plight of Uganda through the eyes of a former LRA's child soldier, Jacob, and the director Jason Russell's American son, Gavin, who doesn't know who Coney is. The film focuses heavily on the issue of child soldiers with Coney's LRA reportedly having up to 30,000 boys and girls who are used as soldiers and sex slaves. Coney is alleged to have fathered over 200 children during his 26 years on the run from the Ugandan government. The half-hour film has been so successful, its makers are already registering over 3.5 million Facebook shares. The Invisible Children, an activist group that campaigns to end genocide and crimes against humanity, said the goal of Coney 2012 was to raise awareness about one of the world's most brutal warlords in an effort to expedite his arrest. The documentary has also called on supporters to act on April 20th, 2012. This is the day when we will meet at sundown and blanket every street in every city until the sun comes up. The rest of the world will go to bed Friday night and wake up to hundreds of thousands of posters demanding justice. Russell said. Kony, who wants to implement a theocratic government in Uganda based on the Ten Commandments, was indicted by the International Criminal Court in 2006 for war crimes but has evaded capture. Viewers of the film have expressed shock and anger at the events taking place in Uganda, and many have pledged to do what they can to help, including many celebrities. On the negative side of things, a lot of controversy has come about Kony 2012 because of the whole campaign itself and whether or not the campaign is right and whether or not the actual organisation itself is transparent enough. And we'll discuss that with myself and Rashwani coming up next. The Y Factor. On to other news, Sydney man Paul Peters has pleaded guilty to charges he strapped to hoax collar bum to teenager Madeline Pulver in a bid to extort millions from her family. The bizarre incident caused international headlines and shocked the residents of the exclusive Sydney suburb of Mossman on the Lower North Shore, which is where I live and thank God it wasn't a Muslim. Peters appeared on a video screen from prison as his solicitor formally entered his plea of guilty. Sydney has suffered its heaviest rainfall in five years, bringing the city's transport system to a halt and causing hundreds of rescues and evacuations. About 120 millimetres of rain fell on parts of the CBD this morning, with the Bureau of Meteorology's Observatory Hill weather station recording its highest daily rainfall since 2007. Those travelling to work in Summer Hill had to even wade through floodwaters at Summer Hill station as the CBD is inundated. Members of an alleged criminal syndicate involved in Sydney's illegal drug and firearms market have been arrested in early morning raids in a bid by police to halt a spate of recent drive-by shootings. Nine men and two women were taken into custody after more than 100 police made simultaneous raids in driving rain on six houses at Villawood, Punchbowl and Bass Hill just after 7.30am this morning. And the next news, Australia's unemployment rate rose 5.2% in February as companies shed more than 15,000 jobs, increasing the chances of another interest rate cut. 
In Syria, the UN humanitarian chief Valerie Amos accompanied a Syrian Arab Red Crescent team on Wednesday into a former rebel-held district of Homs, where dissidents have reported bloody reprisals by President Bashar al-Assad's forces. The Red Crescent team found that most residents had actually fled the district, where rebels had resisted a 26-day army siege until March the 1st, an ICRC spokesman Hisham Hassan said in Geneva. Amos was there to persuade authorities to grant unfettered access for aid workers to needy civilians caught up in violence. The long delay in securing access for relief agencies trying to deliver supplies and evacuate the wounded has fueled international concern about the fate of survivors in Baba Amr. In the latest of several accounts of killings and other abuses, local activist Mohammed Al Humsi said troops and pro Assad militiamen had stabbed to death seven males, including a 10 year old, from one family Tuesday, and their bodies were dumped in farmland next to Baba Amr. International community says it's only a matter of time before President Assad has left office or is deposed, although the the world still has not found a way to halt a year worth of bloodshed since many Syrians rose against Assad in what has proved to be one of the longest and bloodiest Arab revolts against entrenched rulers. Inshallah Bashar is taken down soon. In Norway, I'm sure we all remember the Norwegian terrorist Anders Behring Breivik, whose bomb attack and shooting massacre shocked the small country last summer, was charged on Wednesday with terrorism and the premeditated murder of 77 people as officials prepared for a trial to start next month. Why he wasn't called a terrorist to begin with is beyond all of us. Prosecutors said they would initially seek a sentence of psychiatric care for the admitted killer, but it might demand 21 years in prison. Well, there you go. He was just a misunderstood terrorist. Israel on Wednesday cautiously welcomed the planned resumption of big power nuclear talks with Iran, insisting that Tehran be denied the means to turn uranium into bomb fuel, with Israel speaking increasingly loudly of resorting to military action to prevent Iran from gaining nuclear weapons. The talks could provide some respite in a crisis that has driven up oil prices and threatened to suck the United States into its third major war in a decade. The world's best-selling tablet computer received a major overhaul today, becoming the first Apple product to connect to next-generation 4G mobile networks and gaining a high-definition screen, more graphical grunt, voice dictation and a significantly better camera for the same price as the old model. But Australians will not be able to use the new iPad's new speedy 4G connection, which is incompatible with the country's only 4G network when it arrives in local stores on March 16th. Take that, Apple lovers! The federal government could be forced to apologise and pay millions of dollars after at least 775 credible claims of sexual and other abuse emerged against the Australian Defence Force Academy. A royal commission may also be ordered to investigate the claims, which date back to 1951 and range from serious criminal allegations to minor abuse. Think twice before you join the ADF. The hacking group, known as Anonymous, has taken down several Vatican websites saying it was targeting the corrupt Catholic Church. The hackers left over on the website a statement saying, Anonymous decided today to besiege your site in response to the doctrine, to the liturgies, to the absurd and anachronistic concepts that your for-profit organisation spreads around the world. This attack is not against the Christian religion or the faithful around the world, but against the Roman Apostolic Church, said the statement. Melbourne, Australia. A turning of the soil ceremony has marked the beginnings of works to build Australia's first Islamic museum. Secretary General of the Organisation of Islamic Corporation, OIC, Ekmeluddin Ihsanoglu, inaugurated the Islamic Museum of Australia at a special ceremony recently held in Melbourne. The event was also attended by the Premier of Victoria, several federal government ministers, special envoy to the OIC, Ahmed Fahur, who is also the co-founder of the museum, Islamic community leaders and other invited guests. The Y Factor. And now on to the wacky news. What's in a name? Very little it seems. While most of us are stuck with them forever, half of our parents select babies' names simply because they like the sound of them. Preliminary survey results show one in five bases their decision on cultural significance while 15% settle on names that match well with their surname. Celebrities and book characters inspire 11% of parents, while 4% choose the name of someone they admire. Also, a man finds an image of Jesus in a tortilla. Well done. A toddler escapes a nursery by scaling a 7-foot spiked metal fence to escape from his nursery school. Forget Alcatraz, this baby can get out of anything. Ricky Martin make glorious anthem for Kazakhstan? Kazakh public events descends into farce when organizers confuse national anthem for Ricky Martin's tune Live la vida loca. 
by George. A three-year-old McDonald's Chicken McNugget said to resemble George Washington has sold on eBay for $8,100. Well done, America. Babies of a bird species called the Eurasian Roller have found to vomit a foul-smelling orange liquid as a defense mechanism. Interesting. Researchers at Oxford University say a new drug commonly used to treat heart disease may also make patients less racist. Dressing dead mice in dolls' clothing is becoming a hot new hobby among New York hipsters. A zombie pandemic? It's all academic. This spring, Michigan State University will offer an online course entitled Surviving the Coming Zombie Apocalypse, Catastrophes and Human Behaviour. Interesting. And finally, a British furniture retailer has been banned by the advertising watchdog from claiming its prices are Sofa King Low. The Y Factor. Hey, Jamal, where can you get the best steak and ribs? At Flames. Have they got any deals on? Yeah, mate. Specials on Thursdays, pizza and pastas, only 10 bucks. 10 bucks? Yeah, 10 bucks. 10 10 bucks. 10 10 bucks. And 20% off everything else. Only on Thursdays and Sundays. Where at? At At Flames. 396 Beamish Street, Campsie. Be there. The Y Factor. Wow, Jamal, man, that's it's a massive week of news, eh? Some crazy headlines coming through. Yeah, yeah, especially in terms of politics and internationally. But um, I think it's time for my rant today. Don't you think so? I think it's about time. What it's, do you think, listeners? Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a controversial one. Um, I was speaking to you about it outside, and you kind of disagreed with we me. We were. I thought you were a bit of a... We were out loggerheads there. <laughs> yeah. Jamal I thought you were words. full of it, mate. I thought you were full of it. Jamal had words for me that can't be said on air. I d- yeah. <laughs> Unless we beat them out. But Right. Well, look, I'm going to say what I, how I feel about it. That's um, the point of my rant. And I think that uh, if you disagree with us, listeners, please jump on the Facebook page and please tell us about it. We want to hear about your disagreements. We want to hear about how you think I am an absolute silly person. How he's full of it, just like a lot yeah. of the reports yeah. that are coming out. Well, a lot of reports coming. Actually, it's, it's been in the news. It was in um, Sydney Morning Herald. We still haven't morning. told our listeners what it's about. <laughs> what it's about? Oh, well, I bet they would have guessed by now. Um, we're talking about the Coney 2012 campaign, something that emerged around last night. It basically exploded 3.5 million Facebook shares, demolishing yeah. their record of 500,000. From the last reports. Probably a lot more than that. Uh, the last reports as well were 4 million video views. It's probably blown up a lot more than that now yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's it's still going, uh, still going, and still growing. Well, I haven't as well. checked it, but it's definitely probably. Yeah, a lot bigger I still than have that. some friends on my Facebook page still sharing it. Now, yeah. my gripe with it, uh, if anyone seen, hasn't seen it, please go and see. It, it is worth seeing. Yep. It's a fantastic um, ad, fantastic viral marketing campaign. It's, that it's a thirty-minute video. Uh, you ha- it's yeah. a thirty-minute short documentary. Awesome, very good quality. Yeah, um, definitely worth checking out. Inspirational. All yeah, that it's sort it's of thing. twenty-nine minutes, so half an hour, um, and basically the. the the beauty of it is in its production value. So the way it looks, the way it sounds, the editing. I mean, some of the the, the Facebook timeline, timeline at the beginning, how it was used. Um, the writing is beautiful and brilliant. The characters all wonderful. You know, it literally looks like something you would watch in the cinema. Yeah, it, it does. It looks like someone has put a lot of effort into it. And to be honest with you, they should be uh, they should be commended for their effort because. That kind of uh, effort going into something like this is worth it. It's worth it. You know what I mean? Can you imagine? If you we weren't did saying like that, that before the show, and I think that's I, no, where no, you're going. I, I commend their effort in doing something like that, but the purpose behind it, I I don't agree with. Well, that's so, uh, that's I think uh, I'm probably going to have to join in with your rant then today. Yeah, hang on. Let me say what I have to say first. Okay, Jamil, stop cutting right. it to me. Well, let us uh, for those who don't know what Coney 2012 is. Uh, like we said, it's a 30 minute documentary, and it's basically trying to it's it's sort of trying to start up a campaign um, to promote Coney uh, John. Coney, who is the leader of um, the LRA, the Lord's uh, Resistance Army in Uganda, who is he's a basically a warlord, a massive international criminal, who's he's stolen, he's, sorry, he's kidnapped thirty around thirty thousand children. Over the last 30 years, he's um, made the boys into basically killing machines, made them kill their parents with the girls that he kidnapped, turned them into sex slaves. Yeah. Um, his whole purpose is to... It's a Christian, you know, in I, and I put that very uh, loosely because it has no Christian values, yeah. but he, he sort of calls himself... Uh, like a, a, a Christian army that's trying to implement the Ten Commandments in Uganda. Mm-hmm. Now, this is... Com- Just as on a side note, can you imagine if they were a Muslim? Group? Oh, mate. Oh, mate. The amount of media coverage of him and his doings would be incredible. Yeah, I mean, definitely, it's just, definitely. 
the, another, the, another that's, showing that's of, a hypocrisy of the media yeah exactly another showing of the hypocrisy of the media if he was a Muslim wow channel 7 yeah. and 10 and 9 all of them would have jumped on this bandwagon in seconds and be saying how oh look at what the Muslims do this that but yeah, instead yeah. you know I mean I had to sort of look into it and research to find out that it was actually he was a Christian, Christian yeah group. exactly so it's actually not really uh, promoted or analysed or emphasised not in very the surprising coverage. seeing as that uh, like we said if it was a Muslim organisation they would have been hammered uh, they, for, they for and been blaming Islam for this man's actions, you mm-hmm, know. Mm-hmm. But um, as we said, it's uh, the it's it's a Christian, although not a uh, falls outside of uh, Christian yeah, theology yeah, yeah. and so forth. But um, the whole campaign, Kony twenty twelve, is to raise awareness about this guy and to on April the twentieth, two thousand and twelve, get get thousands or millions of people all around the world to to overnight post up and like all of these posters about Kony 2012 mm-hmm. um, really raise awareness and pump it up and just get his face out there so that he becomes just as famous as any other mainstream actor or anything like that or politician mm-hmm. so they're really putting in a lot of effort in order to raise awareness about this massive social issue mm-hmm. in Uganda that's um, that's been the death of a lot of people that's but ruined it, a lot of really lives is it really a social issue? Now this is where my my kind of rant comes in at the end of the day he's a criminal right a criminal to be tried but his trial and his finding and and his coming to justice won't change the fate of the nation do you know what i mean like the people there will still be fighting each other one one man falling is not going to change not only the the uh, ideals and fates of that nation but of all the nations in africa i disagree listeners don't would you say the same thing i mean would uh, let's say for example the fall of bashar al-assad or gaddafi or mubarak or did that not help change that did help change, but that's different because it's on a different scale. We're talking, you're talking about world leaders. This man is not a world leader. He's a rebel. He's a massive warlord in Uganda. He was well, like saying Osama bin Laden's death changed Afghanistan, did it? His influence actually changed a lot of the world, especially uh, from, from a media perspective. If, me- a, if no, all this hype... The media changed, yes, in, no, media but changed the world. Because of, of how... Okay, fair enough. But they still used him as, as like a, a scapegoat right. to really demonise yeah. so, the Muslims. So basically, but hang on, with Uganda, with John wait, wait, Kony... If you use that argument for Kony, then you could say that they're using him as a scapegoat for the problems in Uganda. So, using again, same example, if we apply that to Osama Bin Laden's thing, Osama Bin Laden was killed, apparently, last Year, and has it helped? It, yeah. uh, well, has it helped Afghanistan? No. Only yesterday, six British soldiers died in a bombing. Right. So there is still um there is still fighting going on. There is still deaths happening over there. There is still a country in chaos. One warlord's death or w- removal from the country affected nothing and no one. That's a completely different issue though, because the war in Afghanistan is is like the headline is war against terror. You know, that's that's the whole sort of agenda that yeah, they're but pushing. At the end of the day, but in military, Uganda, there's a military it's, battle. It's actually getting seeking revenge and seeking justice for all those thousands of families and little kids who have actually been kidnapped by this guy. And turned into soldiers for all those families who have been been murdered by because of this guy and his crazy ideas he's a complete psychopath and the whole point of this campaign is not only to raise awareness about this guy but also to set a president so that if we can catch this guy and actually trial him in an international court and throw him away in jail or even execute him inshallah then you can do the same thing for people like Bashar al-Assad you can do the same thing for any other international criminals to actually help clean up the world we should what we should be doing is viral marketing campaigns against the aid system that is in place by the US that's what we should be fixing we should be fixing the very system that has put Uganda in crisis for over 50 years that's fair enough which you, is the would, aid hang away but the I wouldn't aid stop structure the aid structure that is where the economy of um, the countries in which aid and I put that in quotation marks is given is hijacked by first world nations so they can make money off it but that's something that that's completely uh, worldwide like you have uh, poverty but all around the world that's the key bec- and issue. That, See, that actually propagates all, the, all of these exactly. criminal so if, if we can fix this, then people like Kony, not just Kony, because remember, there are hundreds of Konys out there in Africa. There are millions of tr- child soldiers. But okay? the whole point is to set the president Wait, so we can start taking, but that's just removing one man. these guys. Imagine you did this for the whole issue. Then you'd be dealing with the root of the problem. Then you would actually be striking at the heart of what is wrong with not only the African system, but with the global aid structure that is helping or not really helping third world countries. 
that's what we should be advocating for because that will actually bring real change if you tell me now that people people's awareness of Kony is going to change the situation in Africa then I'm sorry but you're deluded because at the end of the day you're full of it but you're but, full of no, it but at the end of the day <laughs> at the end of the day they might be aware of it but they wouldn't understand it I have a couple couple questions all right uh, for one don't you think all of this awareness about Kony will actually promote people in to looking into Uganda really and helping so? Uganda do you really think uh, so yes I do and the do second you, thing I highly doubt because it, you're raising awareness about the situation in Uganda the second awareness thing is different to understanding that's another but thing. the whole campaign is is actually encouraging people and inspiring people to actually go out there and create change and not be of those people who what? just sort of Ready give up and say oh sh- I'm just one share. person I can't Clicking do anything a button on your f- on your computer does not change but anything. that's just the beginning that's the whole thing that's if you look if you actually watch that you didn't even watch the whole entire video you have to I watch watched the, whole the majority video. of it and yeah, I really you have to watch it start to finish why what's the difference and the second thing are you just going to let this international criminal go He's he a will be found and tried once Uganda becomes a stable nation. And what are you sure of that? A hundred percent. He's moved out of Uganda right now. And in Did fact, you know I that? would prefer I would prefer that they become a stable nation before criminals like that are charged. Because at the end of the day, more people will gain from a stable nation than they would from the death of one man. I'd say, why can't you just do the same the two things at the same time? Well, tell me, where's the other campaign to do? The, the whole thing at the moment of this campaign is to start a movement. Are people going to be moving around just helping Uganda? There's poverty all over the world. If you're going to say, let, let everybody jump on and fix Uganda's economy, what about everybody else's economy? America itself well, that's why my is get, having of, a, a co- like their economy itself is my going down. You think they're going to care about someone else? Would affect everyone's poverty because the aid structure, which is what I think is wrong, would affect everyone. All third world countries get aid, don't they? And if it is directed correctly then the, Im- the countries can emerge from the third world, right? So it's not just dealing with Uganda. This focus on Uganda then ignores, for example, the Horn of Africa and they're starving. But you've got so many international charities who are already pushing for that sort of thing. This is one movement like that. that's the got, biggest it's, movement it's, to emerge in recent years. That's because it's done, been done so well. That's because right. they've actually, you know, put in the effort to so catch So they've taken criminal. all their focus and focused it on a nation when they could be focusing on everyone. But this is just one niche group. You, like, you've got people who are looking after humanitarian issues issues and poverty and so forth this is one one group for example right would you say go, go to the cancer council and start saying no 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 that's not right you shouldn't be um putting all your effort into finding a cure for cancer you should be you know improve improving ma- marketing for slip slop slap and so forth you should go right at the root of the issue and stop people from tanning well curing without. cancer is pretty much going to the right of the issue because the root of the issue because you can't really why not cut it off from vaccinate. from the base right well, that's what they, i guess what they're trying to find they're trying to find a vaccination for cancer if you want to call it that if they're doing that then yeah okay that's basically what you're i would trump mate it's you're a, trumped no nah, no nah, listen buddy okay if you're just going to band-aid is uh, provide a band-aid solution onto a huge problem then you're not really fixing it it's not a band-aid solution you you setting a president so then you can actually start what removing people and from is one like Bashar al Charity money on uh, what was it? Seventy-one percent of all the money that they gain goes towards production values and actors. They're not a like charity. That. They're an awareness raising. Their whole point is to awareness raise. They have the, they have every right to put that towards raising awareness. Their whole point is just to raise raise awareness on one criminal. Yeah, so they can set a president so that he can be take he can actually be caught, trial by an international Imagine court, so that you can have people like Bashar al-Assad, like Gaddafi, like Mubarak, to actually be caught. It's the best way to make money, right? If movies and things like that is the best way to make money, yeah? So what they should be doing is taking all the money that they make from this amazing video, 3.5 million, how much you said? More than 4 million shares. If everyone put $10, right, you'd have $40 million, yeah? With you now, and they're going to spend it all on production values of movie number Bro, two. Bro, I'm, I'm telling you, $15 million, which is what the, I think it was about $15 million that they made in the last year, is nothing. Absolutely. It's like a, it's a, a drop in the ocean compared to what the amount of money that's given in international aid. That doesn't actually... That's the thing. Maybe we should start raising awareness of how aid is distributed. Because, of course, it's distributed wrongly. Who is the number one receiver of aid from America? Go. Israel. Aha. Who's number two? I'm not sure, actually. Mubarak. Really? Yes, Mubarak was number two. Well, anyway. Do you see now? Wait, do you see now the problem? Yeah, fair the enough. The problem is right there. But, number but that's one and number the two. Point. Why don't you start a campaign just like the, I the Invisible have, I didn't children. have the materials that they do. See, if I gave you all the tools and materials to do this brilliant movie, and you said to me, you know what, I'm going to do it on Kony. But Some guy has been inactive for six years. Bro, if you watch the movie, the guy was actually inspired because he met people who used to, who had family killed by Ah, Kony, but that's not their first who movie. Used to be but remember, that's not child. their first movie. But the, the whole thing is the guy's been thinking about it and planning it for the last 10 years. If you start from now and you start... They didn't start off with millions of dollars. They started off from a very... Uh, a minute, like a very 
small position and they just built up until they got all of these numbers, all these supporters who actually feel strongly about justice and they feel strongly about taking out this, this tyrant who's, you know, and like I said, if they can set this president, then maybe we can even get Bashar al-Assad uh, people to actually go in and remove him you and actually try him by international is going court. You think that help I think it's better than all these people getting killed. Some people said during our launch that um, it's come to that, that uh, the time has come for um, people to start, you know, uh, putting the soldiers in there because people are dying. You know what I mean? And to be honest with you, I've got mixed reactions to that because I don't want military intervention in uh, Syria because I don't want um, external hands placed within the government. I don't want another puppet government. Do you know what I mean? But people are dying. Do you know what I mean? It's a difficult. It's a very difficult situation. Same thing. Like I, I highly disagree with all those people who say, "Oh, you know, you, there shouldn't be uprisings and things like that in in Syria or oh, Libya or Egypt." Oh no, no, that's a different issue. That's not like the, the you know. People. I mean, are, are we just gonna? Uh, should we just sit idly by while tyrants, you know, kill your family members and things like that? People who say that have no idea mm. what the situation is like on the ground. They've never had to go through any of that mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. They're well, like, "No, actually, brother, the, you know, you, we, we can't do uprisings morning. and stuff." Meanwhile, you know, we just sit idly by while he that's he right. you know has his way that's you right. know that's that's unjust to the nth degree in my that's opinion. right i mean like there are things down there apparently um in uh, in uh, a town near homs i forgot what it was called they weren't allowing red cross aid and red crescent aid because the military was in there removing traces of the uh, atrocities that they performed over there it's just things like that i mean that makes me feel like the time has come for uh, intervention to happen i think I think it's it's beyond that now. People are dying. Do you know what I mean? And if they win, if if uh, Assad remains in seat, then everything that we work towards, all the different uh, uprisings and everything, could possibly fall away. Do you know what I mean? Syria is the key country. I don't know, Jamal. It's a big issue. But moving back to Kony twenty twelve. So you you said you had some problems with it. What else did you have problems with it? Well. Because be I, I've seen, like, I, I personally shared the video, and I've seen, like, uh, I've seen a lot of uh, videos been, uh, sorry, comments been posted mm. up about, you know, no, don't share it, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, a lot of, say, for example, the Charity Navigator thing or whatever it was mm-hmm. that actually did the analysis on, on um, uh, ch- what are called, Invisible Children, the charity. Yep. They gave it two out of four stars for, and it was lacking in transparency and That's right, it wasn't audited but, and things but, like that. But really, it, it actually was, um, every charity has the right to, to be, like, have an individual audit. We have some charities here that don't get individual audits. Mm-hmm. And I can think of a really big one, but I'm not going to say the name. And then I get what you mean, I get what you mean. But I think that what, what I feel about the, um, and they're not the whole actually campaign is that it's a waste of resources to focus on one criminal. I think that they're the but problems... But it's, it's a small the number of resources in comparison to the massive amount that's already going yeah, into raising the, the waste about the poverty. The problems within Africa are not just limited to Coney and Coney lookalikes. But the you know whole I mean? point is to set the president so that we can start cleaning up the Why world. Why should we set a precedent with a lower issue? Why can't we set a precedent with the biggest issue? Such as? The aid distribution. Start up a new campaign yourself. I don't have the, pr- the, the tools and the ability to You can start somewhere just like the other You know boys. what? I might do that. You know what? So let's just, let's do that. Why You're factory. trolled, mate. You're trolled. Let's, let's You're w- giving in, Rush I'm not giving in, okay? <laughs> I am trying to cut this argument... Um, Back to the root. Because you know I'm right. No, you know you're I'm not right. right. You know, right, right listeners, let's, let's put, your, put your opinions yeah, let's, let's, on let's Facebook. Let's put it to the listeners, right? Who do you think is correct? Me or Jamal? Should the campaign remain? Should it be promoted? Or should it be cut down and um, told to focus on something else? Also, the the other thing is, like, apart from inspiring people to actually take action to, to seek justice, apart from actually mm-hmm. having, you know, uh, bringing awareness to the situation in Uganda so that we can actually put in people's hearts some sort of feeling of uh, you know that that this life is not all about yourself but actually about helping other people as well you know about improving the world the whole the filmmaker's whole point like he kept mentioning it a few times during the actual film was mm-hmm. that I want to leave behind a world where my son is like um, can be proud of where he can that's be a commen- bit that's safer that's the bit where I think it was it, it's an, again commendable I mean I'm not against the guy's efforts yes you are I'm not against or I am yes. against the guy's <laughs> efforts but I think I mean like I think what they're doing is good. I just think it's not good enough. Be- <sighs> okay. The other thing was that a lot of people who are against it are sort of basing it off like one news article, that charity navigator thing. It's just one website as well. And they like, there's a yeah, few things. Yeah, but they make they- important points. I mean, it's like saying, okay, well, I, I, I ignored the news because I just heard it there. But you say, you say like uh, one of the things was um, that they mentioned was uh, they don't have a public board of directors, which they do. 
So it was incorrect. Now you're being now you're being nitty gritty. I never I never pointed out the problems within the charity. I don't care about that. They can be whoever they want. At the end of the day, they're a charity and they're not there for making money. They can be audited or not audited. Doesn't bother me at all. What bothers me is the focus of the campaign and the fact that people are just sharing it just for the sake of sharing it to look to feel good. It's a feel good factor. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's an inspirational factor. It's yeah, not just a feel good okay, factor. Fine. Well, we're inspiring to do what? To do what to exactly? To actually Post buy like pictures of a criminal. Well, if you watch the whole entire video, which you didn't, Rashwani, then you would see Stop that the whole out. the whole point is to buy one of these packs or order one of these packs, whatever it is, and actually on April the twentieth, go out and all o- like at night time, overnight, everybody blankets the city. Are you going to do that? I would totally do it, man. You do it? It's pretty awesome, actually. Yeah. But you would blanket I'm take the a city. picture of you doing laugh at you. All right, good. We're going to post that for on the Wi-Fi page. For your naivety and for your lack of understanding of the situation in Africa. Now you're just caught up by all the media hype as well. I am a journalist. I am the media. <laughs> I can't be caught up by the media. So you're one of those evil people that manipulates the media. I'm not. I'm, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We're not <laughs> like that over here at the Wi-Fi page. So uh, you got a little bit heated between us, Jamel, but uh, you know I you're love full you. of it, mate. You're uh, you know I love you. Don't say that, no, mate. No, yeah, no. Come in, give me, give me a. Hug. Right, I love you, darling. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> so, we, we, you know, can agree to disagree. So we can, yeah, we can fun, agree to disagree. Topic, I, think, I think we should put it to the listeners. Yep. Listeners, please jump on our Facebook page when I post up the YouTube video, inshallah, and um, vote. Do you vote Jamel or do you vote Rashwani? I think this no, 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 it's, it should be Kony or no, anti no, 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 or no, pro no, 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 no. Voting Jamal versus Rashwani. Fine. Well, I think this is the biggest battle within the wife factor. I'm pretty uh, sure I'll automatically win for my, just because of my awesomeness. Really? I think that I'm going to win because people love me. <laughs> I'm like I'm like the Obama of the wife factor. So you're saying you won't vote for me? No. Nah. I would vote for you. Sorry, I've got to be cynical Only about because, this. Because uh, uh, I love you, right? Yeah, I love you too, but I don't love you to that point. <sighs> Isn't that right? I'd vote for myself, actually, because I'm not. Alrighty, okay. And you're wrong. Stick around, Wife Factorians. We're going to be getting into some very interesting issues in dealing with halal medicine and the rugby league. By by the way, by the way, um, if people want to actually hear more about uh, Kony 2012, you can Mm -hmm. go to the website. Watch watch the whole entire video. It's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. And um, if you want to read up about what people are harking on about, about it's, oh, it's not not transparent, blah, blah, blah. Then actually, um, you can Google search that well mm-hmm, as well. Mm-hmm. But do do some wide research. Just, mm. just don't read do some just research. one, do, one l- source. Look into it. Don't just don't just listen to the video. Take a look into it. Form an opinion of your own. Post it on the Wi Factor page, and I promise you, I will disagree. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right, we'll be back soon, inshallah. Sorry. The Y Factor. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back from the break. Jamal, what are we talking about now? We are talking about halal drugs. You meant halal medicine, right? Yes, that's what I meant, exactly. But, okay, you, we've heard of halal food, uh, halal, halal drink, like Bavaria. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now halal medicine. How do you certify like medicine to be halal or well, not? Well, what you do uh, is you get the Panadol and you get the sharp knife and you say, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, and then you slice it and then that's that makes it halal. That is inhumane. No, it's it's actually <laughs> very humane. The, the Panadol doesn't feel a thing. And oh, then you just, Yep, and then they, they cut it up and they serve that to customers. Are there abattoirs in, in Indonesia and Malaysia that do that? You or? can find them at most uh, Muslim-owned pharmacies around Australia. <laughs> actually, no. In the no, back sorry. room, yeah? In sorry. the back room, they're, they're uh, slaughtering Panadol. From, from what I've actually... Uh, we've got a guest in the show today who's telling us that you can only find it in one pharmacy. That's right. Pharmacy that we know of, anyway. In Lakemba. That's right. Uh, we have Sister Duha here from Pharmacy for Less, here to talk about halal medicine and exactly what's involved with a new program that's coming out. Firstly, assalamu alaikum, Sister Duha, and welcome to the program. Wa alaikum as I'm here to talk to you about the HCM program. The HCM is a halal certified medication, which is an organization that strives towards supporting Australian Muslims in their aspirations to enjoy what is right and forbid what is wrong. Okay, fantastic. So there are actually a lot of pharmacies that serve non-halal drugs, so drugs that include animal fats and things like that. Because I, I, I can never imagine, is, is the animal fat or gelatins normally in, like, say, the capsules that cover the medicines and things? It, is. it could be either the capsules or the actual ingredients themselves, mm-hmm. which can um, be halal or not halal. So what this program involves is contacting all the suppliers, all the pharmaceutics and finding out exactly what their products are and then with the religious advice is finding out exactly if they're halal or not. Okay, fair enough. Sounds interesting. Is this the first of its kind? It is the first of its kind. So there may be small scale inquiries. You might have a customer come in and ask and then you call up just for that product. But what this program involves is actually contacting all the suppliers for all products, prescription and non-prescription And making sure. And making sure exactly what they use in finding out exactly if it's halal or not. 
So if if you're a Muslim is looking for halal only drugs, you go to pharmacy for less in for less in Lakemba, and you'll be able to see which drugs are actually. Um, How you'd find out is that the product itself will be certified. It will have a logo, so you'll see a HCM logo on the product. Wow, labeling. Yes. Yeah, so is this part of the uh, halalification of Australia? <laughs> it is. Now we're doing our meat. Now it's the medicine. Yeah. Wait. Uh, I won't be surprised if we see a video coming out of Indonesia <laughs> of a poor Panadol that has been slaughtered un. Halal. <laughs> and then today, tonight, pouncing on it. Saying that it is halal, and then, you know, it, there's this whole controversy about non-halal honestly, panadol. Honestly, w- what I'm interested in is how common is this issue? Is it common? I mean, you're a pharmacist yourself. How often do Muslims come in and inquire about whether drugs are halal or not? It is like a growing concern now because a lot of people are realizing that it's important to take their medication for their health based on their lifestyle. So it is a growing concern. So what we've done is we've addressed this issue. A lot of patients and customers come in asking, is this medication Halal. So what we've done is identified them and just simple, making sure there's no pork or alcohol have been used in the entire process. So the product itself and the manufacturing process. So the drug itself inside may be halal, but then what about the capsule? Yep. And then there's options now of getting capsule or tablet. So it's all identified. It's all going to be labelled. That sounds fantastic. So have you had much response from the community uh, about this new initiative? Well, a lot of customers come in and they ask, or we tell them, like they'll say, okay, so where is the Centrum or where is a certain product? And then obviously because we have this knowledge now, we tell them this product actually is not halal, but I can find you an alternative, and they really do appreciate it. They probably are shocked a bit because we've probably been on it for a few years. Yeah. But it's yeah, they really do appreciate the fact that we are advising and educating them on products that are halal and products that aren't halal. Fair enough. Well, you heard it here first on the Y Factor about the HCM, and uh, you can check out halal products that are labelled being halal at Pharmacy for Less. Um, so how can we find out more information? Well, there's a website we've established as well, so you can go to the halalmedicines.com.au or come into Pharmacy for Less in Lakemba and speak to one of the staff members who'll be more than happy to help you. So in a nutshell, Sister Doha, can you please explain the process involved right from you know HCM to the pharmacy? So HCM is the program. It's got people involved in researching it going to be inshallah 100% accurate either the products either going to be halal or not and what we are doing is implementing that so hopefully inshallah in the next few weeks three to four weeks the products will be labeled they'll have the certificate on it all the staff members will be educated and be aware exactly what is halal and what is not it would be fantastic if we could see this HCM all throughout pharmacies around Australia well it's true so it's starting off in Lakemba pharmacy for less in Lakemba and it will inshallah oh great so this is just the beginning then this is just the beginning fantastic that was an amazing program and we commend you for your efforts Zakla for your time, Sister Doha. Thank you so much for having me here, guys, and I'm really appreciating of what you guys do over here. Thanks. We have a fan. <laughs> Ooh, we've got many fans. Spread the word. Any any person who comes to the pharmacy, inshallah, after you give them their Panadol and life saving medicine, Say, like offer the Y Factor. Just chant to them 87.6 FM, FM. Thursdays. Y Factor. Y Factor. Y factor. Y and factor. just keep repeating that Y Factor. That 87.6. And, and play in the background as well, like in the pharmacy. All the listeners. All right. Thanks, guys, and Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Asalaam wa Rahmatullah. The Y Factor. Welcome back to the Y Factor on 87.6 FM. Today we are talking about f- football and uh, sports we used to play as children back in high school. No, 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 no. What are, you, what are you talking about? What are you talking about, man? Where did you get this accent from? We're not talking about sports we used to play. We're talking about sports professionals play. Professional Profe- sports? Yes, yes. Cut the accent. What, what sports Cut did you accent. actually... All right, all right, all right. Rasha, what sports did you actually used to play back in well, high school? Well, um, you see... <laughs> Actually, uh, I'm more a watcher than a, a, okay. than a thing. Fair but enough. you can't beat me in my analysis of sports. I am a fanatic. Talk Fair to me enough. about tennis. Yeah. Talk to me about soccer. Talk to me about rugby league. Talk to me about grid iron. Just don't talk to me about AFL. Fair enough. Well, I'm actually probably the opposite. I can play all those things, but the, I can't watch any sport except for soccer. That's mm. the only one I You're can strange. stand watching. Everything else is You're like... strange. Boils me to tears. You're strange. And even with football, actually, like... Uh, How like are you a man? <laughs> says the guy who didn't play any sports. I never said I didn't. You I, can, I just you didn't say I didn't play them well. Well, <clears throat> Anyways, we do have a watcher of sports in the studio right now. Yes, to Please commentate welcome. on football or ball foot, whatever you want to call it. Please welcome our local analyst of the rugby league, Nadel Cram. Hello, Y Factorians. Yay! Yeah, yeah. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> and welcome to the show. So, Nadel, are you surprised that Jamal actually doesn't watch sports? He doesn't look like a sports watcher, does he? Actually, I thought he was. Coming really? In, yeah, coming in today. And then when he was telling me out the front that he didn't watch sport, I was actually quite surprised. Really? And then he mentioned soccer and I just turned the up. It's the hair that, that gets me. I always, <laughs> I always uh, knew it's the hair that gets me. 
Anyways, let's get let's actually talk sport, right? Let's so, talk. what's the team that you support in the rugby league? The West Tigers. The West Tigers. Yeah. I'm just hey. gonna personally sit on the side here and not comment. Uh, Take a listen, Jamal. Yeah. Take a listen. <laughs> or you could learn, learn from the pros. Look, That's right. Or yeah. you could do in in the game, right? They give me the ball, tell me to run, tackle this guy, blah blah. Nobody's gonna tell you to run if it's on the TV. <laughs> yeah, the case. It's in front of you. You watch it. I'm just. Saying, I, All right, wait. I, I you like, have to at least have watched State of Origin. I like playing the games, and no, I I don't. I really, I oh cannot stand it. I just. Why can't don't stand you like it. watching the football? Because football. It, football is basically just. Guys on either side of the film field, sort of, you know, a very smashing s- each a very other. S- exactly, a very slow There's game of, of smash, that. stop, move back, smash, stop, move back, smash. What could Whereas be more? What could be more? Slow game? With soccer, it's it's like you know, sort of very skilled, and you're dancing around the other Wait, players. Wait, you watch you watch football? Not so I'll watch soccer any time. Really? As Did long you watch as Champions League thing. this morning? I didn't, but as let's long not as get into that <laughs> because we have we have our. Uh, NRL analyst. Let's get us. Maybe we'll get a football analyst in a couple of weeks. Right. Yeah. Sound off on our Y Factor page if you believe that we should get a football analyst. Anyways, nonetheless, Jamel. Yes. Sit out this one. Uh, uh, <laughs> let's, uh, okay. let's let's talk football. So it's um it's been the first weekend of the rugby yes. league this week. So we, we've got a general idea of um what the teams are going to look like and how the, they're going to play. So give us a general run now. Let's just go through the matches that went through. Um Thursday night we had Knights and Dragons, right? We did. Two front runners, I would say. Wayne Bennett coaches the uh, the Knights. Wayne Bennett being the master coach, and the Dragons are his ex team. That's correct. Thoughts. Darius Boyd against the Knights also. Again, him. It's weird how he just follows his coach around. It's like a, it's a I, bit of a strange relationship, eh? It's loyalty. Lo- you think it's loyalty? Uh, yes, I'm pretty sure if Tim Sheen's left, Benji Marshall would go also with I me. doubt that. It's loyalty. I find that hard to believe. Why Tim Sheen's is coaches Australia as well. Yeah. So correct. what, is, 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 is Benji going to say, wait, I'm Australian? No, <laughs> you can't change your own nationality. So you can. No, actually you can. For all those listeners who don't know what they're talking about, I feel your pain. <laughs> And for all those who are surprised at Nadell's expertise, being a girl at sport, I am also as surprised as you are. Let's get and into that at a later time. Let's just go through the matches first, and then we'll talk about how a woman actually knows anything okay, about sport. Okay, well, <laughs> oh, I'm glad you would. <laughs> what? what did you say? A Wait, what, what, actually, what did I say? Actually, it's funny you should say it, because we were just talking about how I don't know anything about these sports. I just Does that make you a woman? I can play them. The gender roles uh, I'll have play changed. them, but I just don't watch them or know any of the rules about Maybe that's like progression of society. I think it is. That I play are. sports and watch sports. Oh. So. She trumps both of us. <laughs> so you guys just take the back seat and I'll take it from here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, right. the Nadel, it's the Nadel factor. <laughs> I'll, keep, <laughs> I'll keep quiet now. Right? Yeah, yeah, you do that. So back to <laughs> the, back to what we were talking about. Go, yes. How do you feel about the Knights and the Dragons' chances in the Premiership this year? Um, I think they're both pretty strong teams this year. Yeah. Darius Boyd against the Dragons on Friday, on Thursday night was quite entertaining. Yeah. I didn't think he played his best at all. Mm. I think he was he looked a bit scared though. Mm. He was a bit off his game. Um but he'll, no, I think he'll get better over the season. Yeah, well, that's how you, Darius Boyd usually starts off pretty slow. Yeah. But um no, I don't think the Dragons or the Knights have got the premiership this year. I don't yeah. think they're going to be in the final. You think they're like in Me transition phases, one going down, one going up. Yeah, I just think Dragons are going to start off pretty strong. I think Dragons mainly played strong this game because they were against Wayne Bennett. Probably, yeah. It was like an emotional, emotional. I think Jamal's gone to sleep. <laughs> he was are you a learning bit of something, Jamal? It's it's all going over my head. It's like no, That's right? Okay. You know, it's That's just okay. sort of blah blah blah, blah 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 blah. That's okay. Blah, blah. Don't worry, don't worry. That's okay. You do that. <laughs> um, so those two are kind of you know in the mix, but not really. On Friday night we had Eels and Broncos. Eels. Let's not talk about Broncos. I really dislike the Broncos. I was going to say let's not talk about Eels. I like the Broncos. Really? Yeah. Oh no, I like the Eels. I actually feel sorry for them. Really? Parramatta, my second home. Oh, uh, Par- see with Parramatta, I think they're a, a cocky team. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. But in the context, it's all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't, you can't. Let's not go into the uses of that word. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I think Fairmount is a cocky team. Jared Hang carries the team. It's like a one-man team. But then in saying that, they've got like um, Essie Tonga coming in mm-hmm. this year. I think he's a great asset. And they have Sandow. Sandow, yes. Sandow was a tank for the Rabbitohs last year. Yeah, but did you think he played well? Yeah, I think he played well. He's a li- he's a, one of those tough little guys that can, thinks he can take on the world. Yeah. But sometimes he can, sometimes he can't. I well, think he's got to learn where he can and can't. That's exactly like Jared Hayne, though. I think Jared Hayne, as a full... I think he's better as a fullback than any yeah, other position. He is, doesn't playing. he play full... He played fullback, didn't he? Yeah, but last year they put him in five eight as well. Yeah, because so. that guy is weird. But so as, as a fullback, he can, he can take on the world and win. 
If he has a good game, he can. He had a good season in 09 and he got him to the grand final. And that was the last game. That was the last season he ever had a great season. Yeah, I guess so. You could. I mean, like, if they structure a team around his brilliance, after, they could go all the way. Yeah, after um, State of Origin, he does superb. I think yeah, it's like State he does, of Origin he, he, Because yeah, what happens, yeah, or uh, he gets tired as he goes through all the different um, games. Mm. He, it's acceptable. I mean, like, he's a big boy, but, like... He's a big boy. Yeah, he's a big lad. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's acceptable. Broncos. Oh man, I really don't want to talk about the Broncos. Why can't, why Queensland not? teams are excluded from this. Oh my god, North Queensland Cowboys. If I had to, like, if actually no, if I if the Tigers were not in the competition, I'd either be a Queensland fan or a. Sun they got fan. thumped eighteen nil by the Wooden Spooners last year. Yeah, but the Titans like the Titans got games. No, oh, 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 sure, sure. The only difference they have is is Idris, the traitor. The. <laughs> Idris, I cannot. I hate it when people call people traders just because they move teams. Trader, is he a Muslim? Tra- that guy? Bryce Gibbs, no. Jamal, apparently, like they say, his dad. His was dad or was Muslim. His really? mum is Nigerian, I think, or something like that. He's a tall guy, man. He's Funky a hairstyle. big man. Phil yeah, Gould no, always no. says. I watched the game just to see that guy, and I wonder, is that guy Muslim? I wonder. Yeah, I think he's undercover Muslim. You undercover, know? yeah, possibly, possibly. Yeah, no, he um, what were, what were we talking about? Yeah, he's uh, Phil Gould always says Phil Gould being um, the chief analyst of the NRL always says that he's the biggest human being he has ever met. <laughs> <laughs> Jamal Idris. Yeah, I've seen Jamal Idris in real life. We once. share we share a name too. It's no? pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. What odd. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, now I understand your fascination with him. Yeah. He's strange oh, yeah, child. Look, probably because his name is Jamal. Yeah, that's right, actually. Yeah. We've, it's changed, <laughs> especially with hey, him. I'm playing on, on screen. Even though I don't there's like a, the there's a player for the Bulldogs, uh, Bryson Goodwin, yeah. who looks identical to my brother. So every single time he, he kind of plays, I'm like, look, Wasim, you're on the screen. Wasim, look, run, run, Wasim. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, yes, I'm running. Look at me. <laughs> I really like Bryson Goodwin. He's good, eh? I, I think one of the only Bulldog players I can actually stand. Let's get into the crux of this. Okay. Okay, I think everybody here wants to know the answer to this question. Everybody, in fact, everybody in the world oh. wants to know how you feel about the doggies. I the big team, I, the major I, team. I, I can't even comment on this. Like, I'm not even sure if the words I want to describe are allowed on Is air. that because you'll be ostracized by not only your whole entire family, but <laughs> all of your cousins and all no, of the... Let's before actually, we continue that. Her brother is the, the famous Hisham Graham. Yes. yes, and I've She's been also, reminded of yeah. this. And who else, Jamal? I'll let so, you know. Yeah. Sheikh Ahmed Abdu as well, if you've heard of him, as a cousin. Wow. Indeed. Yeah. Family of superstars. Yeah. And a few other names. And his sister is Mihal Kareem. I've got Mihal and Nadine uh, just for yeah. the sake of it. Yes, and uh, Nadine is a twin. We yeah. don't know who Nadine is, but nonetheless. <laughs> I'm the cooler twin. As you've sure. discovered, anyway, you're, you're the black sheep. Don't, it's d- debatable. Don't deny it. Don't uh, you deny Jamal's it. been calling me the black back sheep to the all point, day. Back to the point. Sorry. At the risk of being ostracized by your superstar family, go on. Just tell us your feelings on the Bulldogs within halal limitations. <laughs> it's only gonna be halal. <laughs> 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 um, the Bulldog. I just I can't stand them. I can't even send their supporters. Sorry, <gasps> anyone out there that is a Bulldog That's supporter. That's the whole That's me. I like you as, a, I like you as Every people. lebo in Australia. That's me. <laughs> I don't think I can walk out in Lakemba now, can I? No, <laughs> no. Right, this, the, you know. You're going to have to wear like, the, the bulletproof jacket we've got here. you a security guard. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, as supporters, I really can't stand you guys in the grandstand. I'm so sorry to be saying can you, this. Don't you like but the bum bucket? People, bum, the bum, bum, bum. As people I who are wonderful. I heard that was banned, actually. Huh? Was it was banned? banned, but they keep bringing it. Oh, nice! It was it was on Saturday <laughs> night when they were, when they went up. It's Penrith. funny how Bulldogs only Bulldog supporters have bands on them, don't you think? Like no them back air, no fights. Like why no is fireworks. it that why is it that every <laughs> other supporter for every other team can come to the game and just watch it like normal civilized people? That doesn't matter. The Bulldogs rule, okay? The Bulldogs that, and Parramatta Eels. I'm sorry, Mustafa. From those are my right two favorite <laughs> teams. <laughs> but I just why do you hurt me it. so? I so, just don't understand it. So what was it you were talking about, Bulldog supporters? Um, I'm going to change my name after this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, but that I can sh- feel Muhammad Taha's tears from here. <laughs> <laughs> Her yeah. brothers what? as well. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Muhammad and Sh- Shaming <laughs> your family. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. everybody else. I'm not going to have a home after this. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Okay, so as you're saying, Bulldogs yeah. fans, give us, give us the dirt. Bulldogs fans, you just have to go to the game and you'll see it. Jamal, we have to take you to a game. <laughs> I've been actually the first first NRL and probably the only NRL game I've been to. No, I went to a uh, Manly Eagles game, but the first one I went to was Canterbury Bulldogs versus the Canberra Raiders. And you tell me, how was that? <laughs> It, uh, well, I had this big Australian bloke in front of me yelling profanities the whole game. Mm. Saying, oh, mm. I went to, uh, went to a, a, a uh, 
I once went to a Parramatta Bulldogs game a couple of years back um, when uh, Kimoli was still playing for the Doggies, mm-hmm. and uh, I remember I was sitting. You know, I was sitting on the on the, on the sidelines, and uh, there was this guy. There was this guy and his friends right next to me, and it was a very tense kind of game. It was really close, and he was holding on to the seat in front of him. Now, if you've ever been to the stadium, the seats are plastic, right? So they can, if you push it enough, it'll bend. So he was grabbing onto it, and if any mistake was made by the team, he would shake the seat oh. really, really quickly, and he'd be like, "Why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me?" <laughs> Someone's got issues. If you could see him right now, you'd be laughing too. Yeah. <laughs> is, is that most uh, Bulldogs supporters of those issues? That, that describes it. He just put it right there. I'll, Thank I'll you. admit that they're, they're in an intense bunch. Of Look, if, let's just say if you watched a Bulldogs game and a West Tigers game and they were split in the middle, you would see the class on the West Tigers oh. side. You looked over to the Bulldogs side ouch, and you, ouch. you did bruises no and blood coming blow. out of you. Oh my God, you look, can you believe what she just said? <laughs> and there we have it. You're a born Bulldogs supporter. <laughs> well, can I Yay, say? welcome to the group. Woo. We'll give you a dinner back here and I'll be you soon. Actually, <laughs> you know, I I, I, nev- I sort of stopped supporting doggies after El Madri left. Like, once, yeah, he retired, Hazem, once he retired. Hazem, so. Hazem was the, uh, I, I guess he was the catalyst for the uh, the huge amount of support from the Lebanese community. It's big, true. big fan of him, a top bloke. I actually went on the Hajj trip, with, not in the same group, but we were Hajj uh, then. We, we sort of uh, saw him while we were mm-hmm. there. Nice bloke, man. Yeah, he's he's a top bloke. Great, um, great player as well, back in his day. He was the w- a scorer of the winning try when the Bulldogs won the grand final Correct. in 2004. And in 2005, my, uh, he took over the Tigers. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> on, on the... <laughs> On the brilliance of one player. Who? Mr. Backflick ben- Benji Marshall. Um, I don't, I don't, Benji Marshall's only starting out just then, but he did put in a superb try, I will have to admit. To be honest, I think that if Benji Marshall wants to secure his legend within the NRL, he has to win a second premiership. He should have won he it will. last year. This year. He should have won it last year, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I went to the game um, where he, they versed the uh, Dragons we're not talk- in oh, no, the qualifying we're final. Yeah. No, I didn't see the Warriors <laughs> one. That was that was a bit of a steal, the Warriors. Let, let's game. hear about that one. No. The Warriors game. No, let's not talk about that. Yeah. Yes, anyway, please so tell us. For so everyone's memory, for everyone's, I'm going to lower your, your mic now so you don't <laughs> talk while I talk. <laughs> for everyone's off. memory, the Tigers lost the qualifying final against the New Zealand Warriors. For everybody's memory, the Bulldogs didn't even have, make it. <laughs> that would have put them in the grand final against Manly. And they would have won it as well. That is Manly correct, is but at least boring. we got that close. What happens to the Bulldogs? They at started playing in the last three games of the season. Close. That's your excuse? It's not an excuse, it's fact. So uh, every time a team gets to the preliminary final, they've done really, 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 really well. What do you mean? As in like, so what? If everyone who made it to the final got close enough, then the Bulldogs have made it many times. we got close enough, we just got closer to you. So as a Bulldog supporter, I don't think you have... We didn't have the team last year. That doesn't bother me. You if don't we have the team, team any year. 2004 was your last year. We, we have, well, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> no, I thought I so. like soccer. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to that topic. <laughs> yeah. No. Nah, okay. Oh, well, look. I I honestly believe the doggies will go far this year. I think that they I um they, they got a good down. chance, and uh, they're going to smash the tigers. I mean, de- <laughs> defeat the tigers. I forgot they can't see facial expression. <laughs> <laughs> it was a she look she of shock on really her really face. Like, <laughs> it was more horror. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute <was> disgust. Horror. <laughs> disgust. Uh, yeah. But no, I think I think both the tigers and the bulldogs will go pretty far. I think your only good players, in all, on, well, actually, you know what? You've got a really, really good team this year. Um, that new guy Reynolds, is because it? Yeah, Reynolds, yeah, Reynolds, yeah, Reynolds is the number six. <laughs> yeah, you own yep. the Bulldogs. I reckon he's a good buy. Jamal, I'm going to turn off your mic soon. <laughs> <laughs> so you were sitting out with this one, Jamal. <laughs> yes, Jamal does wonder what he is doing here. <laughs> Jamal, Jamal does. Jamal does. But the other Jamal is playing in, with the Gold Coast, and he knows um, what he's doing. He's Maybe you should follow in his lead and play football. Go Gold Coast. Rather play soccer. Yeah. Play for the Gold Coast. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, Benny Barber. Yeah, He's of course. One of my favorite players, along with Goodwin. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Barber. Yeah, He's what about his little brother, Mom and Barber? I, I haven't seen him. Does he look the same? He's paint exactly the same. It's weird English. how people look like that. It's weird. Yeah. It's like you and your twin. I mean. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, yeah, anyway, so he's going to be good for the Eels when he actually gets time to play. Fair enough, fair enough. So, um, going back to the talk of the Tigers. Mm-hmm. One of the issues that arose um, after that game was the uh, golden point issue. Mm-hmm. Now, to explain to Jamel, basically mm-hmm. what happens is that when two teams um, finish the match at, mm-hmm. uh, on level points, mm-hmm. unlike in football where it will end in a draw mm-hmm. in the league, um, the NRL plays 10 extra minutes in which the first person to score anything, including a field goal, which is when they kick it over the thing, um, they win. 
It's our first person to score. The... Oh, we should we do a demonstration? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we should. Okay. All right, Are you ready? Wait, We're going to do it now. You need to scrunch that bit of paper, and then, you know, someone's going to have to go like, like that. Uh, right. He's, he's, doing, he's doing the, with uh, the fingers. <laughs> with the fingers. The, the, the poles with these fingers now. Yeah. And then you got to try and kick it through. Flick it through? Yep. Yep. Okay. What about I show it to you during the break? Okay, we don't want to do it while we're on air. Do, you want, do we want to do it while we're yeah, on do air? do it. Okay, hang on. We're going to set this up. All right, Michal, I mean Nadine, I mean Nadel. <laughs> let's uh, did so, uh, we almost said Hisham. Let's go for this. <laughs> so we, we've set it up now. We've got a little piece of paper here that um, Nadel can see. It looks like a football, yeah. right? And I'm going to I'm gonna <laughs> try and... It's pretty demented football. football. Like I'm gonna I've never seen a football that looks like that. <laughs> okay, like can, we not, can we not judge my all right, paper all right, ripping Nadelle, skills? This is, uh, you've got a, a game between the Doggies and the Tigers. You have to commentate, right? Okay. Okay, are you ready? Yeah, absolutely. Really, really uh, animated. Okay, okay, let's go. Let's go. All right. Okay, so Michael Ennis has the ball. <laughs> what are we laughing at now? We're just we're giving <laughs> a demonstration of the field goal. Okay, okay? but it's gonna be different because I don't know which side had the ball. Before. No, okay. Do you want me to do it? Okay, I'm gonna do it. Right, so okay. Mick Ennis no, no, passes you, you to both can, You both can be the commentators, like you know, even okay. trying to imitate. You'll feel good. You're the one that goes, oh, oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And then I'll be I'll be uh, w- Ray Warren because I know the names of the doggies players. Oh, oh, okay. He cares about doggies players. Player right, gets are we ready? Set up okay. with the ball. Alrighty then. He's uh, got the ball now. Gives it to Ennis. Ennis passes it on oh, to Hodkinson. No! And Hodkinson t- prepares a shot, <laughs> takes it in. And he hey! misses. No, no okay. Benji Marshall's through. got the ball. <laughs> Benji Marshall takes the ball. Passes it out to Ben Ryan. Passes it back to Benji Marshall. And the field goal is over. One point for the Tigers, and the Tigers have won the game. Oh, what's that? What's that? Referee's <laughs> calling for a, a TV replay. TV, TV, <laughs> TV replay. replay. We're oh. waiting on it. We're waiting on it. Well, look, you know, I saw the ball touch the line, but I'm not 100% sure. It went TV over. replay. Went, TV we, replay. We, we, what Ray? did we find? <gasps> the ball actually went through the goalpost. Through the goalpost. Woo, the Tigers Woo. have won the game. Once again, Benji Marshall wins the game. Okay. Can we, this is Your imagination is running away and with you now. once again, the Bulldogs have lost. <laughs> I, I don't and know again, what she She's been smoking before she came here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, your imagination is running away with but you let's now. Be the, 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 the Tigers would never win a game against let's the Bulldogs. Let's be realistic. If the Tigers and the Bulldogs were playing, would it really go into Golden Point? It w- no, it wouldn't. The Doggies <laughs> would have smashed them ages ago. Okay, oh, 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 give it to oh, me. Oh, yeah. High five. <laughs> okay. Don't watch football. I have no idea what you're talking about either. Back, <laughs> back, to the, back to the original point, which we decided before we set up our little Correct. demonstration there, which was... Does the field goal act as a good way to end the match? So, obviously, in that sense, both teams have tried their, their um, butts off for 80 minutes. Mm-hmm. They have to go for 90 minutes now and, and decided on a flick of a, a flick of the kick. Or a flick kick. Whatever you want to call it. Do you know what I mean? Do like they do the same thing? Kick. Like, is, is a match is decided by, you know, one, you yeah, know, one side. You, one, you gotta, somebody from the opposing side putting their fingers together no. as <laughs> goalposts. <laughs> <laughs> and then somebody from That's the other team goes. flicks a piece That's of paper. Exactly right. So I close. <laughs> now be quiet. I knew there was a reason I didn't watch this sport. Take his microphone off. Yeah, I'm, you know what? I might. Jamel, your microphone is no. off. <laughs> no, no not, it's okay. You I'm wouldn't gonna dare. I wouldn't dare. Okay, so. But the deal, what, did you, what did you think of the actual question? Like, because a lot of teams try very hard for very long and it's like it's almost unfair. It's like a penalty shootout mm-hmm. for football, you know? So are you saying. It's just chance. Yeah, but are you saying the golden point shouldn't be a way to end the game when it's once going to extra time? Well, I think that it's it's it, they should just be a draw. They should just be a draw. Both teams tried their their butts off. No winner could be found. That's it. Draw. I think no. I think that should go into extra time. How exciting is extra time? Would you be satisfied if your team walked off the field with a draw? Just one point. On Have the you ladder? never watched football before? Excuse me, do you know there who are you're draws. Oh, snap. Do there you know are draws th- every week in football. It's I not a big deal. It is a big deal. Right. If you can have an extra 10 minutes to make your team win, wouldn't you play that extra 10 minutes or whatever yeah, until someone's Yeah, but what it becomes in, it just becomes a shootout. It doesn't become an, uh, a football, uh, rugby league match. That's why they should take the golden point out. I don't think you should be able to score with a field goal. I think you actually have to put in a try. I put it first person to try? Yeah, first person to try. Even penalty. But that's I- tough. Then they, they, then they didn't need more than 10 minutes. Well, no, so, no it, then at the end of the 10 minutes, if no one scores, then we can draw. But if you what I like the golden point, I'm not saying anything's wrong with the golden point, the field goal, but mm. I'm saying it if, does create a lot of excitement, yeah. But if you're not happy with it, then go for it, then mm. they should take that out. But I'm I'm okay with it. Mm. Hard hitting issues Ansel. here on the Y factor, indeed, indeed. <laughs> but um, I think we've got to leave it there, Nadil, as mm-hmm. much as uh, we have both enjoyed not really too much, we have already enjoyed <laughs> your analysis. I think he's enjoyed it more than he thought he would. Yeah, actually, I think he has. He enjoyed uh, me uh, well, flicking the paper <coughs> to his face. I, I, I actually, I didn't pay attention to anything you were saying. Uh, so, but apart from that, I enjoyed it. 
fair, fair. Okay, I'll take that. That's okay. That's fine with me. But um, Nadel, thank you very much for coming in and analysing the football. Thank you. Uh, we hope to hear from you again. So post up on our page how you feel about the weekend's match matches, and I'll let you know how much oh, no the Tigers doubt. have sucked. Uh, oh. <laughs> um, just a message to the Bulldog support me- supporters: Don't come after me. <laughs> I'm not Nadel after today. <laughs> and go the Tigers. Yeah. And mark my words, we'll win the premiership. You keep telling yourself that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks for coming on the show, Nadel, and talking yeah, was, about all this It was this great stuff. having you. Thanks again. Really and uh, go the doggies. Woo. <laughs> I don't think so. The Y Factor. And now for the events that are coming up this week. Tomorrow, you have Rhythms of Resistance for Israeli Apartheid Week 2012. It's a social night from 6.30 p.m. until 10 p.m. This is Friday night. You can get tickets for this. It's very cheap. It's only $10 for concession and $15 for adults with a massive lineup of awesome artists. List of performers include musician and Palestinian activist Phil Mansour, hip-hop artist El Fresh the Lion, poet and spoken word artist Rima Solbeats, Oud player Muhammad Yusuf, and my personal friend Zohab Khan, the best male poetry slam artist in Australia, and Poetry Slam State finalist. There'll be giveaways, food, and more on the night. So come along and show your support. It's at Granville Community Centre, Main Hall, 3A Memorial Drive, Granville. You can look up the page on Facebook at Rhythms of Resistance, Israeli Apartheid Week 2012. It's starting at 6:30 p.m. Friday night. Get your tickets online. Check out the Facebook page. Come along if you support Palestinian human rights and condemn Israel's apartheid regime and its military occupation of Palestine and Palestinians. Show your support. And it should be an awesome night. If you want news of more events, you can head over to the Facebook page. This has been the Jamster on the mic. Thank you for listening to The Y Factor on 87.6. Brought to you by Flame Steakhouse Pizza and Ribs in Campsie. Peace out. Assalamu alaikum.